Hey, it's Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we love each and every day with the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the industry. This segment a little bit different each and every week with uh, Justin Datavio. You can catch him on Iron Man Football on Twitter, also on State of the U, where he breaks down Miami football. We ask him about uh, various uh, offensive formations in particular, scheme strategies, and the like. And considering uh, Miami's schedule over the last uh, Prior week, looking forward to Central Michigan coming up this week. Uh, Justin's going to kind of give us a look on uh, program building and uh, why these games are scheduled. Justin, how are you doing today? Great, great. great. Good to see you. Uh, let's uh, talk up uh, Miami's perspective on uh, they just beat up on Bethune-Cookman, uh, a team that they face on a regular basis uh, to a certain extent, 63 nothing. Central Michigan's coming up out of the MAC. They lost to Wisconsin 61 to nothing. A lot of people look at these games and they're like, why, why, why? Uh, there is no preseason in college football. There are other factors involved in regards to why you would schedule this in week one. Maybe why do you schedule it in week three and four? Uh, some of your thoughts. Um, you know, I mean, I do think you need to play. I would play a game earlier on that maybe put a challenge in at my program, but that I assumed I would beat. So in other words, I probably wouldn't play a Bethune fam Savannah state that Miami has repeatedly played that are um, FCS programs in, you know, middle of the road or lower. I think, I think Savannah state has dropped to D two, you know, like lower level FCS. I would play either a really good one, a Kennesaw an app state back in the day, um, which obviously got Michigan, you know, in trouble, Eastern Washington, Washington state lost them recently. That's a really good one. Right. I'd either play something like that that I thought I would beat, but that would give me a good push, or I would just play a, a you know, G5 team. Um, you know, what's the difference between Miami playing Bethune and Miami playing Wyoming? I mean, you know, 500 tickets. You know, I, I don't see the giant difference between it, but I also don't see a reason why you're playing an FCS team. So I would prefer if FBS teams did not play FCS teams so that there was a scholarship, you know, equity going on there, you know, parity and scholarship level at least um and from there you know i think that there are benefits to it i think playing a, a lower level team as a positive because you get to get other players in you can kind of see where your depth is um guys who may or may not play much the rest of the season especially when conference play starts can get some work and you never know maybe that person plays really really well and they just weren't much of a practice player or um, they just match up better against different people than what you have. You know, they're, they're better against an odd front than even front or the other way around. Right. So um, there are just um, things like that, situations like that, but, you know, beating up uh, on a, on a cupcake, you know, first game of the season is one thing. Um, after that, you know, the odd thing with the SEC doing it the week before rivalry week is strange. Um, I sort of get it obviously to get healthy and sort of rest some players and kind of really be preparing film for, Auburn if you're Alabama or vice versa but um you know it, I understand why people don't want to buy season tickets if I know that I'm going to see I mean look at Miami's home schedule you know at first you know it's pretty rough right if I knew I was going to see Bethune Central Michigan um you know whoever else they play at home they do have a couple of decent home games and they play Tech at Virginia Tech at home but you know if you play Florida State away that year you don't have a whole lot to go see at home you know, power wise. So it's nicer to see home games against, um, you know, even pretty good G5 uh, Memphis. Why not play Memphis? Cause they might beat you. That's why. Cause Miami's not very good. Right. So you're scared to play a Memphis cause they might beat you. Yeah. They did all miss this year yeah. and they have uh, challenged uh, those types of teams on a regular basis. And we see North Dakota state taking uh, teams to the wire. They did so yeah. with Minnesota this yeah. year and, and that's their recent history. So obviously the trade-off uh, on the surface is money. The, the smaller school gets the big payday. The larger school gets a scrimmage and then they get the, 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 the extra home game. They can guarantee the home game. It seems as though a lot more big schools are having to travel to not that level, Bethune-Cookman or of that nature. But Missouri went to Wyoming. Uh, Arkansas has gone to Colorado State this past year, and I could go on and on and on. Uh, Miami went to App State a couple of years ago. They had a date at Arkansas State scheduled before that got wiped out. So more of those games yeah. are scheduled where the the huge programs are willing to go uh, to the smaller school, although I haven't seen 
Alabama, Clemson, or Ohio State do that. But uh, at a certain point, yeah, I see a lot of those schools now venturing off to to take on a group of five on the road. Does, has Ohio State played Cincinnati at Rippert Stadium or no? Uh, they played at Paul at the Bengals Stadium once. At the Bengals Stadium. Yeah, well, they didn't that play there. No. Yeah. Um, although apparently Rippert's like the best uh, in-game experience money can buy or something like that. Apparently it's like insane there. I haven't been, but I have a lot of family members who that too. have been in, in Cincinnati before. Um, Miami played at Toledo. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to do that a little bit, right? Um, I think, you know, I was listening to podcasts and played Nobody, and they were talking about UCF. Does UCF just want to be undefeated and then complain every offseason, or does UCF actually want to do two games at – the Florida Gators in Gainesville and then one game at camping world considered a home game, even though it's a bigger stadium to sell more tickets for, for UF to get the chance at playing for a national championship. You know, UCF might wind up undefeated again, but who on their schedule, cause Stanford's so you know down who on their schedule constitutes a playoff run. Nobody, you know, I love Memphis. You know, I, I I'm a huge fan of Navy, but I'm not going to say any, you know, Houston's down. I'm not going to say any of those teams are, so dominant that you're just throwing playoff at UCF. Yeah, well, they they couldn't have predicted Stanford better when you schedule Stanford. Uh, and, and they've played Pitt the last few years. They got Pitt coming up this week. Again, Pitt be monumental. Then why don't we take two weeks off or at least one and get healthy and hopefully we can place it at a uh, at least with Miami. They've played two difficult games and now they get a couple weeks off before they tear into Virginia, Virginia Tech, which is obviously a a key point in the schedule. Sure. You, you get a couple of weeks, you know, quote unquote off or whatever, but the time that you usually see players get injured, um, whether it's a practice and this is at multiple levels or, or in a game is when they aren't going a hundred percent. Whenever somebody's sort of like jogging around, staying around a pile, um, you know, when your quarterback, thinks he's going to just get tagged in practice and somebody comes up and pops him a little bit. That's when guys get injured. They rarely get injured going full speed, tackling properly, blocking properly, running a great route, you know, catching the ball and getting up field and all that. It's when they kind of catch the ball and they just kind of slow down and stop booms and it comes in and hits them. And you're like, you probably shouldn't have slowed down. You know, this was a live drill or something along that line. So I think that becomes kind of the situation is, okay, so when you're playing, Central Michigan and you're up by three touchdowns and it, you know, our linemen still blocking as hard as they can working in downfield or do guys start letting up and standing around piles. And next thing you know, your knees get rolled up or the running back still running through things. Or are they like getting ready to just kind of trot out of bounds as somebody comes in and annihilates them because the guy on uh, central Michigan's roster is trying to guarantee a spot and knocking, you know, DJ Dallas, through the damn field is the way that he can secure an NFL draft status in his mind. Right. So um, sometimes you get into where those guys are playing a lot harder. They have a lot less to lose or to gain from, you know, knocking a, a, a division one high quality ACC player around. So you, you can see where guys just sort of dog it and they, you know, it's called loafs, right? You check your loafs on your, on your chart at the end of the game and guys will loaf and, and that's where you get injured. You know, I'm not sure if guys get injured always and they do at times, but always get injured going full speed. Uh, but yeah, the less reps that your body takes, the more you have on your body only has so many reps. You know, I think pro wrestling, they call it how many bumps you have. You you only take so many bumps, right? You only land flat on your back or so many times before your body gives out. Football is the same way. You can only play so many reps before your body gives up. Some guys, it gives up quicker than others. Some guys take, you know, last a lot longer. But your body has a, has a, you know, a clock, you know, an odometer almost. On. It has a clock. And as soon as you've hit your number of reps, it's over. And so like for running backs, I get why they leave early and they don't play in bowl games and things because you're taking a hard shot, right? If I was a, a middle linebacker, would I <clears throat> play in a bowl game? Maybe not because I'm taking a lot of hard, heavy shots that are constant banging. And it's not the shot to the head that gets you. It's the 25 consecutive boom, boom, boom. I pop your face mask bangs into something, not a huge targeting type, you know, side of the head hit, but just constant striking in your neck and, you know, your vertebrae is not supposed to really push back and all that. So I get it on both ends of, I don't want my guys jogging around. So maybe that's why when the twos and threes go and open, they're playing their ass off. But I also understand why you would want 
guys to go out because your body only has so many bumps. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, as you can see on the banner, you get uh, my weekly predictions. You go to the voice of college football community link uh, right in the description section right there, 44 and 28 against the spread through three weeks. All right. Got Justin Tatavio on the line. So specifically looking at Miami coming off Bethune Cookman going into central Michigan, what do you think that they should be working on to get ready for that coastal division march? Sorry. Uh, school day. Uh, you know, teach your lunch. It's always sad. <laughs> um, you know, what should they be looking forward to? You know, you want to look forward to, I think, playing uh, mistake free football. So, like, as you look, um, you come know, controlling the controllables. The things in football that you can definitely control are false starts and encroachments. You definitely control uh, bad snaps, right? That's rare that the ball just slips out of your hands when they change the ball out every play and they all have towels and all that stuff and the ball's all tacked up with with uh, product and you know all that stuff. Um, so you want to you know bad snaps for one. Uh, you know not knowing your assignment is one. You know if you if you call out trips right and a guy lines up in the wrong formation, you can control that controllable. Um, so if you have a bunch of guys who are maybe even on the defensive side. You have a safety who's not noticing trips. He's not rolling over there properly, or he's rolling over, but he's playing at 12 instead of at eight. Those are the things you can control. You don't see those happens regardless of opponent. So, again, penalties, uh, bad snaps, um, you know, misalignments and misidentifications. So, if, if your job as a left tackle is to block, you know, the defensive end outside of your shoulder and you keep skipping him and working up. Oh, sure. Your running back runs for, you know, a touchdown because he can make two moves on a guy that's an FCS player, but he can't do that against Virginia tech. He can't do it against Florida state. He can't do it against Clemson. And so you're seeing things that just don't work, you know, against other levels. So it's misidentification stuff. It's going to be alignment and assignment, um, definitely penalties. And then also like just sloppy, bad terms, guys carrying a ball way out and, you know, loses his form. You want him to hold it in here and, or you have a, um, you know, quarterback throwing, just just throwing balls, spraying them around because he thinks, well, I can fit this in there. It's just a bad team. He throws interceptions. Some of that stuff is things you've got to fix because when it comes to better competition, you aren't going to be able to do it. So, you know, Trevor Lawrence has thrown like five interceptions already. I'm sure they're looking at that and saying, okay, oh, I, I know one of me in Syracuse was tipped. You know, they're, they're looking at things like that. Was it a bad read by him? Was it a bad throw or mechanics off? Or just a guy just jump ball? You know, like things just sort of happen. So I think you look at those controllables. You attempt to control your controllables. Okay, Justin Tatabio joins us each and every week to break down the X's and O's. You can join him at Ironman Football. That would be, uh, got it right here, Ironman Football Blog. Ironmanfootballblog.com. Join him on Twitter. Also does good work at uh, State of the U, breaking down the Canes and the ACC. Justin, we appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Good stuff, man. Thanks. No problem. Thanks. Have, have a good day. We'll Bye. see you.